Greetings. Welcome to the 2016 Black Sustainability Summit Q&A session with Dr. Muja Shakir. This is Raina. Um, I will be the moderator for um, this session. We are going to be working through um, these slides for your benefit. I'm going to turn over the presentation to Dr. Muja Shakir. I'll be clicking through her slides, so we'll be having a little communication as we advance to each slide, um, and I hope that you all forgive us. But I want to make sure that you all understand who she is. I'm going to let her give you a little bit of background on, on herself and what it is that she's doing. And then we will go through the slides for about, I'd say, 10 minutes, and then we'll stop and take Q&A. Um, so, Dr. Shakir, you can um, give a summation of the presentation since it is already up on our website. They just did not get the benefit of your magnificent audio, which is an error on my end. So if you don't mind starting, I will um, mute my microphone, but I will advance the slides when you let me know. All right? Okay. Thank you very much, Raina, and greetings to all out there in the listening audience. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this um, Black Sustainability Summit. Uh, my name is Muja Shakir. Um, I'm a professor at Tuskegee University. I teach occupational therapy. Um, I uh, was actually born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, um, and then also lived in Oakland, California for about 20 years before moving to the rural southeast of the United States. Um, Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace is a part of a vision that I've had for a very, very long time, but finally was able to manifest it um, just in the last... Um, year, actually. Um, I acquired 57 acres of land in rural Alabama in Tuskegee, and the vision has always been to um, build a holistic, sustainable community using land as a healing tool. Next slide. All right, this is a, just a quick uh, of an overview um, we have a 25-acre trust. Um, our vision, mission, and purpose statement um, is on one of the slides. Um, I'll quickly go through the meaning of the name. Um, we have a unique organizational structure, which includes a council of elder vision keepers. We have a very dynamic uh, board, um, board of directors, um, committees, and we have businesses, and we use a consensus decision-making process. Next slide. All right, uh, what informs Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace? Um, I said a little bit about, you know, kind of my own journey um, as someone who um, sought to uh, move to the southeast by land and to build an institution was the vision that I had. Um, also, in meeting other people, um, the recognition that others also share similar visions, if not in some cases, almost an exact identical um, vision. And so I was blessed to meet individuals who, uh, in, in fact, had the same vision. And so these are the individuals that became part of the board. Um, it's important that we look at and conduct a type of an analysis of our historical past and movements as we venture forward. We don't want to make unnecessary mistakes as we move forward, so um, it's important that we do that, that we do an analysis of our successful movement. Um, what informs Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace is a very, very deep, uh, prolonged longing for emancipation, liberation, and transformation for African people all over the world. It also is informed by a deep and abiding respect for nature. Um, this term, nature, borrowed from one of, our, um, one of our friends and one of our brothers, uh, Kareem Muhammad, um, has developed a whole philosophy and document. And so uh, a big part of what we're doing uh, fits into that philosophy uh, of nature culture. And we certainly are informed by the image of the Most High God, the creator of all things, and that the creator has, is the most creative. And so in that image, um, we are held responsible for being creators as well. Next slide. We have um, 
a nice size pond uh, on the property that actually has fish in it. Um, we have a 25-acre land trust, um, a community land trust that's located here in Tuskegee, and this is where we intend to build our community. Next slide. The vision of Nature's Garden is to manage land that is preserved and built upon to evoke health, social well-being, victory and peace in members of the community. Next. And our mission is to use the land as a healing tool, cultural asset based on cooperative economics, and to deliver culturally relevant programs and businesses to members of the community. This is achieved through a shared value system and the development of a transformative, intentional learning community that supports governance. And I'll say a little bit more about that learning community. Uh, let's skip through this one. It's kind of a, um, in the interest of time, we'll skip through the purpose because that's giving you the vision and the mission. You might be wondering about the meaning of the name itself. Uh, Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace is inspired by the multi-genius botanist, inventor, and artist George Washington Carver. The name is resurrected from Carver's 1942 bulletin number 43 entitled Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace. Nature's Garden, it's a metaphor for many things. Nature is cyclical in its design. It teaches us how there is a time and season for all things and that when it is properly understood, nature teaches us that we are part and parcel of her and are totally dependent on her for sustenance. The garden is a metaphor for how life forms are nurtured and cultivated naturally and enhanced by the hands and the care which the gardener provides. Furthermore, it shows the interconnection between all things, fire, sun, water, rain, air, wind, earth, soil, all the essential elements. Next slide. This is um, our organizational structure. We have a council of elder vision keepers, which is an indigenous concept. Um, we have, we're calling it an enterprising board of directors because um, the members of the board, many of them aspire to develop their businesses on the 25 acres. Um, like most organizations, we have committees, uh, which is how the work will actually take place. And we utilize um, quite a few volunteers. We're fortunate enough that we're in a city where there's a, a university, and we have many students that will come out and volunteer their services. Next slide. Um, here is our Council of Elder Vision Keepers, um, and we thought that this is something that we wanted to do in order to kind of protect the vision. Um, and so uh, right now we have three individuals, myself included. Um, we may expand this to include a couple more people. Um, but the role that they will play is that in the event that there is a decision, um, sort of a, a deadlock uh, in the consensus decision-making process, um, or for other reasons, um, we might elicit the involvement of the council. For example, um, if the board wanted to change the purpose of Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace, or if they wanted to borrow money in, in excess, or sell assets, or even amend the bylaws, that we have this, uh, this second uh, level of structure in order to avoid those kinds of things happening. Next slide. Okay, these are actually uh, pictures of members of the board. Um, I'm very proud to say that um, more than 50% of our board is made up of individuals that are in their 20s. Um, several of them are current um, Tuskegee University students uh, majoring in engineering and business and occupational therapy. Um, and several are alumni uh, from Tuskegee University. Uh, there you see Jaslyn Fuller, who is um, very, very active um, in um, helping us put the organization together, as well as Brian Ellis. Um, so that's our board. Um, we have an attorney. Um, these are the officers. I chair the board, and there you can see a vice chair and our treasurer, secretary, uh, the chair of marketing. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about these as we go forward. Next slide. Um, 
some of you may have heard from Clark Arrington, who gave a presentation. Um, he is the the uh, individual that we retain to um, be our um, attorney and to put our paperwork together. Um, he has helped us tremendously with the concept of the community land trust, which we adopted once he uh, taught us about it. Uh, he has helped us with our articles of incorporation, um, our board agreements, and with the nonprofit uh, filing of the 501c3 status. Next slide. Um, this is a, a slide that sort of shows some of the business enterprises that we will be um, engulfing upon, a garden and pond project. Um, the garden will be a um, organic um, food production system. We have acreage or spaces uh, where we hope to attract uh, people with a shared vision uh, and similar values that may want to come and, and actually build um, their own structure, their own home on the property. Uh, we have a general contractor that's also on our board that will um, assist us with building and construction. And we use a lot of volunteers to get that done. Um, we have an arts and culture component. Uh, we plan to develop a post-secondary school um, of the healing arts. And this very, very important transformative intentional learning community is an asset that really makes all of what we're doing happen because this is the place where we will resolve um, any differences that may emerge. This is the place in this intentional learning community where we will study together, try to develop a common understanding as much as possible, um, and try to assure that um, that unity um, and reciprocity and some of the higher values that we need um, remain solid and strong. Next slide. Um, these are some of the committees, uh, landscaping and maintenance. You know, when you have a lot of acreage, you know, Mother Nature does not slow down one bit. So it's almost on an ongoing basis uh, where you have to be engaged with the, with the process of the, uh, the natural environment. So these are some of the committees that we have. And um, you know, getting your committees up and running is very, very important. Um, I talked a little bit about this already, so I won't go through it again. But this is the transformative community where we will engage in dialogue in a safe environment so that people can uh, not only be honest but are willing to shift in their thinking. Next slide. We also have a group uh, from the university. It's called the Black Belt Deliberative Dialogue Group, which is a community campus partnership. And here you see several different forums that we've had in the community and some of our members. Uh, dialogue is going to be very, very important um, in order to uh, make sure that uh, we're understanding each other uh, before we move move too far ahead. We want to avoid uh, any fallout as much as possible. Next slide. Um, this is an image of uh, some of the work that has taken place on the property. Um, we think of it, the sustainability, from the standpoint that if we're able to attract um, an expert in any given area, that expert can then um, develop workshops so that the volunteers uh, are able to learn new skills. Um, and in that way, uh, we're building in some sustainability. Next slide. Uh, these are just some examples of um, perhaps some of the housing types of structures um, that people might be interested. We're definitely interested in um, green um, development, uh, being off the grid as much as possible. Um, and so again, we invite um, you know people that may be listening who may be interested um, to um, contact us, and we can give you more information on this. Next slide. Uh, this uh, I mentioned, um, well, the Healing Arts Academy, um, because I am an educator and have been a part of um, higher education for a number of years, I'm very familiar with uh, here in the States, we have an accreditation process that, um, so we want to develop a post-secondary school on uh, various types of healing modalities. We want to teach uh, massage therapy and energy work, um, the organic food production, fitness and wellness programs, uh, printing and cultural studies. Next slide. 
Um, we're blessed to have Brian Ellis, who um, is actually a mechanical in- engineer, but also loves um, the um, the martial art form of capoeira. So he works with young people and and um, people of all ages, teaching them um, the Afro Brazilian um, form of um, capoeira. And this has been a great addition. He has his own website, and you can see it listed below. Next slide. Uh, I mentioned Jaslyn uh, Fuller, who is um, has her own company. It's called Black Scale Media, and um, the whole process of branding and um, and marketing is very very important. Um, and she takes us through a great uh, process. And she's also available for um, for hire if, if if you're out there and you're interested. And you can see her website listed below. Next slide. Um, well, Dill Balaams is uh, an extraordinary artist, as well as our general contractor, a multi-talented brother, um, and um, he will uh, work with us um, to um, to provide art opportunities for young people and people of all ages in our community, as well as help us with our green design. And um, he's on Facebook and also has uh, his own web page. Um, Dion Olivia is a registered massage therapist and a light worker, empath, and a facilitator of healing. Um, she will also be a part of this team that will work to develop the Healing Arts Academy. Next slide. Um, this young brother, Jamel Thompson, actually um, is based in Atlanta, but will be working with us. Atlanta is probably by car one hour and 30 minutes from Tuskegee, Alabama. So um, he is um, an expert in um, what he does. He has a, a business called Urban Detox. And um, again, he will work with us to help us develop our organic garden. And his website is listed below. Um, Jalil Mutavana is a sound healer. Um, and he uses... Um, Vessels for giving and receiving of divine light, which is based on a Japanese system. Uh, we realize that our people worldwide um, are in need of healing. And as much as we can um, utilize um, alternatives um, to the healing process, uh, as opposed to always the pharmaceutical approach, this is what we believe is to be uh, most sustainable in, 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 the, in the health and healing of our people. Um, we have a unique decision-making process, which is consensus, is people-centered. It's um, an attempt to develop a collective agreement. Uh, it requires collaboration. It requires it, uh, the acknowledgement that everyone has a voice. Um, and um, we stress the values of cooperation. And there's something called uh, groupthink, which um, you know requires a more discussion than what we can go into right now. But we don't want people in the interest of trying to come to a quick decision to avoid uh, bringing up the rigor that may be needed to hash out and to truly come to a, a genuine collective agreement. So that's our decision-making uh, structure. So in closing, uh, Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace represents a special place where people live in peace with each other and in harmony with the cycles of nature. They work with passion and service, using their gifts and talents to innovate and in labor to make manifest something of both beauty and utility. We play in celebration of the harvest and in the achievement of our personal and collective goals, experiencing a wonderful sense of victory. Um, and I would also like to say that we are also very global in our thinking. And um, as over the um, the last couple of days that I watched some of the presentations, and particularly the one in the Gambia, um, I could see how we could definitely become um, avenues for each other with um, people coming from that side to our side and us coming to your side. Um, so we look forward to that, and we invite all of you to be in touch with us at Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace. All right. Yes, I think yes. on the last slide. Oh, there's more. I think the last slide has our contact information. Yeah, there's our website um, and email address, 
and a snail mail address. So please be in touch with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will go ahead and open up the floor for Q&A or commentary from those. Um, if you just simply want to introduce yourself and share what it was that you wanted to learn. The presentation has been up on the website, although it did not have audio. If you had any questions about a particular slide, we can go back to the slide and address the questions at that point. You can raise your hand by selecting the orange hand icon, which will raise your hand, or you can type in your question in a question box and I will read it out loud for Dr. Shakir. Um, let's see, we can go ahead and open up the floor now. Does anybody have any questions? Great, Ikena, your your microphone is now unmuted. Great, happy risings, my dear sister. How are you? Uh, this is Ikena calling from Atlanta. Absolutely fabulous um, presentation and work that you're doing. And I was glad to hear that you um, pointed out the work in the Gambia. Um, uh, I'm very familiar with that because I visited last year and also have an interest in the, further developing that community and working with it. So I wanted to, to just say that um, I would be in touch with you to see how we might partner and look at the, the projects in the Gambia. Uh, similarly, um, a project in Tanzania uh, has been on my heart for a long time and I think you will remember the sister uh, Mama Upesi M. Tambuzi um, yes. um, and her uh, properties out there and her work in establishing the uh, female rights of passage program in California uh, and she always had a vision of doing more with the youth on her land in Tanzania so um, in honor of her that that is on my heart to pull together that type of a program and hopefully I can connect with you to, to do Absolutely. that. Oh, you know, I would love that. I really, let's consider it done. Mm -hmm. I look yeah. forward to talking with you about it. Um, Ikena, thank you so much. You're welcome. Ashe. Ashe. Well, there's another question that has come in. Um, let's see, or it's more so a comment from Erlene. Um, she doesn't have a microphone, but she said she doesn't have questions, but she wanted to let you know that you did, had a great presentation. Oh, thank you so much, Erlene. Nice feedback. Um, let's see. Is there anybody else? Just raise your hand, and I can come through and unmute your microphone, and you can type in your question, as Erlene did. Or you can send it in the chat directly to the presenter. Anybody else? Well, while I have you on the phone um, or on the line, um, I, I see a few uh, familiar faces that are logged in. Um, I wanted to find out from you um, about the progress on the land where you are um, and seeing if there are any specific timelines or goals for people that would be interested in helping <clears throat> in person to come out and work the land or to lend a hand um, are there any? Is there anything specifically that you are in need of that we may be able to support you with? Yeah, um, pretty much every weekend um, we will want uh, volunteers or people to come out and um, help in different capacities. Um, our first year, this is really our first real year. Uh, the last three months, you know, we've been pretty much focused on the um, the structure, the governance structure, and getting the paperwork done. Um, this year, we want to build another road. Uh, right now, we just have one one entryway into the property. We want to build a second road. Um, that that's one of the goals that we want to achieve this year. We also want to really get our garden um, up and running full force um, this spring. Uh, there's things that we can do right now to uh, continue to enrich the soil, so that's what we'll be working on over the next three months so that we'll be ready for spring planting. Uh, we, we need to build a fence around um, the parameters of where that garden is going to take place. Um, the third um, project is we actually want to build a stage on the land, um, and the stage will be something that will allow us to raise money with um, festivals and outdoor entertainment of such. Um, we're looking at doing a reggae festival this year. 
or maybe in the fall of the year. So um, those are the three primary um, projects for this year, and we're working on a five-year plan, a five-year vision, um, and that um, at the end of that five years, we hope to have the place really up and running um, to the extent that it can also be used as a retreat center for uh, for other groups. Uh, it can be used for, for places, um, rent, you know, we can rent out spaces so that people could maybe have weddings and, and things of that nature. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Um, I, I thank you again. I will... Oh, yeah, every weekend. Every weekend we'll have... Um, you know, workers. Um, so anybody that wants to come out, just just contact me, um, and um, you know, we'll talk about the time, the timing, and um, you know, if you need accommodations or you know those kinds of things. Okay, wonderful. And you'll allow people, um, I guess, on the land um, for those types of stays, um, retreats, or things like that. That is, the land will be open for that type of use if. Um, Absolutely, yeah. We've um, many of us have been concerned that there's so few black-owned spaces where we can go, um, and typically we end up in uh, hotels, you know, big corporate hotels or retreat spots that are not owned by us. So we want to really create a first-class um, place here in Tuskegee. Um, where, you know, groups of people can come and have their, their retreats, have their conferences, have their workshops. Well, I will definitely be taking you up on that offer. <laughs> okay, good, good. And for anybody else that has questions out there, I see um, a few more people um, signing on. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. Otherwise, um, you may... Write down her contact information, which is up on the screen, naturesgardenvp at gmail.com. Oh, there's a question that just came in <laughs> from Adoya Faye. All right. Um, when the residential portion is ready, what will be the criteria for people to apply to live there? Yeah, um, and in all honesty, we're still working through that. Um, I think that it's probably going to be anybody that's interested will probably ask them for some kind of um, references. That would be number one. Um, we want to make sure that the people that we bring in are going to be the kind of people that um, that um, that believe that we believe in similar things. We want to create that kind of community. Um, that's going to be based uh, on on some communal living um, on a value system. So we'll have that. Um, so we would love it if people kind of we know somebody that knows somebody. Those kinds of things. Um, that would be one thing. And then um, people need to be able to come and finance their own building. Of course, um, it's not like we will have homes already built necessarily. Even though we are looking at um, the possibilities of very inexpensive ways of doing that. We've talked about the car, the car trains um, that uh, we've seen, you know, uh, re refitted, uh, rehabbed, and those can be quite nice and very affordable for people. Um, you know, you see the the television shows about the tiny houses and um, you know the yurts and those kinds of things. We're open to doing that. Um, so the exact process has not been put down in writing as of yet, but we're going to be working on that real soon. Wonderful. Do you offer? It is a. It's um. I don't know if people heard um, Clark Harrington's presentation where he talked about the concept of the land trust, and it's where um, I think um, in the Gambia I heard. Um, the, them discussing the same thing where you don't really end up owning the land, but you own the structures that you put on the land and you're welcome to stay for as long as you want to stay, you, you know, for a lifetime. Um, but if you decided that you wanted to leave, you could either sell your structure or you could take it with you when you leave. Okay. Um, do you offer any workshops or um for those who would like to build their own homes or work with the developer um, to build their homes? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. that, that's definitely going to be part of what we're doing. I mean, we already have started to do that with one structure um, where uh, we basically had only two very skilled individuals and that the other people who uh, helped were, um, you know, were volunteers. And so that became a, a type of a workshop. And um, once, you know, this idea is really uh, firmly developed, um, we, we also can see that volunteers who consistently come and actually um, acquire uh, a pre-described uh, set of skills, we can actually give them a certificate of completion and that the certificate could actually mean something if that we become um, the post-secondary school so that people can then say that they have training, you know, in a particular area well, of building. That is wonderful. It comes back to us validating ourselves and not necessarily always seeking out um, validation from other institutions that aren't designed for us. So I commend you right. all of your work. Um, I know it has definitely been um, a labor of love for you. And um, yes. <laughs> for those that are interested in reaching out to um, Mama Muja, Dr. Um, Shakir, um, please, mm -hmm. please write down her contact information and feel free to reach out. If you have any questions or you'd like to be put in touch with her and or you'd like to share the information and for whatever reason you don't um, keep the contact information, I'm also willing to um, put you all in contact if you email Black Sustainability Summit at gmail.com. The whole goal is to make sure that we stay connected and that the right people get connected with the right organizations and groups. So. I thank you again for your time this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. And um, for those of you who um, have any remaining questions, please be sure to submit them in the fashion that's outlined on the website. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful remainder of the day. And thank we you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.